Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out important news. And you got 7 million reasons to hear about this news with us today. Richard Murphy, CEO of Manitou Gold, trades in Canada under MTU. And for our friends in the U.S., under MNTUF. For those of you to the story and probably saw the headline, here's what you need to know. And trust me, you're going to love this. First, Manitou controls 100% of the Goodrow, 100% of the Goodrow project in Northern Ontario, where they're accelerating exploration in search of Canada's next gold discovery. Second, they're not doing it alone. They've got support from two majors, including Alamos, a $4 billion producer who owns 19.99% of the company, and O3 Mining, that's the Osisco Group company, who owns 9.99%. They're helping out both on the balance sheet and in the boardroom because both companies have board positions as well. Why? Well, the area around Goodrow uh, host two multi-million ounce gold deposits. One is Alamos Gold, their high-grade island mine, and the other one is Argonaut Gold's uh, Maginot planned open pit gold mine and processing mill. So a lot of things going on around there. Today's press release, Manitou uh, signs agreement to sell 100% interest in its Dryden properties for $7 million. I told you you want 7 million reasons. Richard, welcome back to the show, my friend. Thank you very much, George. Hey, this sounds like uh, a pretty big transaction, $7 million. Why the sale right now? What do you plan to do with the money? Uh, well, first off, yeah, total consideration is $7 million, uh, cash and stock. Um, additionally, up front, there's an additional uh, 4 million shares. This isn't a private company, um, but uh, we'll discuss this in a little bit. I, I'm, I'm confident um, those shares will be uh, publicly traded by the end of this year. Um, as to why we're doing it, as you know, we've talked in the past about our Goudreau uh, project, our, our laser focus on that project. Uh, well, there's a ton of upside at, at Dryden. Um, we don't have the, the, the mental cap, uh, capabilities to work on two uh, or the financial capabilities to work on two projects simultaneously. Right. Who is, by the way, who is Dryden Gold? It's not often you see deals like this done with a private company. Usually it's done with a public company. You get shares in those companies and shareholders you kind of calculate, you know, what those shares will be worth today and what they may be worth down the road. Before we go to the public side of, or the planned public side of Dryden Gold, who are they? Who's the team behind them? Why did you feel so much confidence to put your properties into them? So Dryden Gold is, uh, as you said, private. It's a very recently incorporated company. Um, it's founded uh, and managed by the former uh, management group and founders of uh, Ely Gold Royalty Inc. So Ely was, a, a as the name says, a, a gold royalty company. Um, they uh, put together a very large portfolio of gold royalties, uh, ran the company very successfully over uh, a few years and uh, had a successful exit last year. The company was taken over uh, by Gold Royalty Inc. Uh, in a 300 million transaction. So these guys, they know how to run business. They know yeah. how to do straightforward deals. Um, and I'm very confident in this management group. You've, uh, as you've said, a big portion of the, comp of, of the compensation is in stock. Uh, how, look, shareholders are going to be asking, how confident are you in this potential IPO that they may be doing uh, at the end of 2022, if all goes well? And, uh, and what do you think the, the, the true value of, of, your, of your stock may be? Uh, from my perspective, um, you know, getting an IPO done is going to take two things. It's it's the management group, which you know we've just discussed. They're a very competent, professional group. Secondly, it's the ability to showcase some upside. Uh, they're not trying to sell um, you know some moose past here in the back forty. This is actually the Ken West property, part of the part of the Dryden portfolio. Ken West has got past production. It's had you know fairly recent. Um, Bonanza grade intersections like Manitou Gold uh, at one point drilled an intersection there, uh, half a meter running 53,700 grams per ton. Absolutely spectacular piece of core that came out of the ground. Um, so it, I'm confident that, that this team uh, is going to be able to put an early stage uh, first pass um, exploration program together. And I think they're going to be very successful in marketing an IPO. Um, after the summer, after the sort of field season and after they've done a little bit of work on the project. So is that what, you know, is that what attracted Dryden, you know, to 
to Manitou's Dryden properties at the end of the day? Yeah, this team was actually looking for uh, assets in a, in a good jurisdiction, not necessarily, I think, limited to Ontario, but certainly Ontario was, was one of the jurisdictions they were looking at. And they wanted something that could be camp scale. Um, so they've assembled now with this transaction, a large uh, foothold in the Wabagoon uh, Greenstone Belt. Uh, this is a, another sort of emerging area. Um, Treasury Metals is up there working towards development uh, of their mine. And uh, I think it's a great, a great address. This portfolio could be a company maker. It's just gonna take a lot of work, uh, a lot of investment, a lot of thinking. And um, I look forward to participating in, in this as a, as a large, very large shareholder um, of Dryden Gold. And beyond the exploration feeds, uh, if they are successful, we hold uh, a healthy royalty on the entire portfolio of properties. I like the fact that you guys made the decision, Richards, because sometimes egos get in the way. I like the fact that you guys made the decision to say, hey, look, uh, we don't have the bandwidth. Uh, you know, we're so focused on our good road project that we don't have the bandwidth uh, and time to dedicate to the dried properties that, that's so, that are so important. Um, and, and that you found such a good home for them at the at the end of the day. Are there any synergies there uh, in the Dryden deal that brings, aside from the obvious in the compensation, in the comp structure that brings value to Manitou and the shareholders? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for the last several years now, we've been 100% focused on, on, you know, first building and acquiring all the lands we have on the Goudreau project, which now encompass 350 square kilometers. You know, we're bookended between uh, past producing or operating mines. So on the very uh, east end of our property, there's uh, Barracks past producing Renabi gold mine, which was a you know, million ounce plus producer. Uh, on our uh, western property boundary is Alamos Gold's Island Gold Mine. And as you mentioned, adjacent just west again is the, uh, the Magino Open Pit Development, uh, which is another multi-million ounce deposit. So this is where all our focus is going. Uh, we haven't had, again, sort of the bandwidth or the you know the financial or or uh, uh, sort of talent wise to work on two properties separately so you know we weren't in a position to be delivering shareholder value in the near term on the Dryden portfolio so it made all the sense in the world uh, to sell it to a good group uh, who's actually got you know the management skills and the technical horsepower uh, to undertake you know meaningful exploration on the Dryden properties and we get to participate through the upside both through you know, a very large uh, shareholding in Dryden Gold, you know, post, post their IPO, my anticipation will be well, well over um, that insider ownership level, well over 10%. And again, we retain those royalties on the, uh, on the entire portfolio. So let's talk about the Goodrow project for a second, because obviously that's your flagship. Uh, you've, got, you've got two zones there. Uh, separated through faulting, and your and your uh, thesis that the two deformation zones may be part of an original single zone that are separated due to uh, due to faulting. You had uh, a high grade discovery in the fall of 2021 uh, that seems to confirm uh, your exploration uh, theory on the Baltimore deformation zone. And then January 11th, you guys put out the news that your winter program was starting, and it's a serious program, including a bridge. You know, you're issued a permit to construct a bridge. Uh, Richard, I mean, are we re reading between the lines? Or it just seems like you guys have an incredible amount of confidence to, to be mobilizing this big of a program. It's a, it's a yeah, pretty big mobilization that we undertook in January. Um, so you're right. On, on the Goudreau project, uh, the main uh, deformation corridor that hosts uh, all uh, on the west and in particular, all of the... Um, mines past producing, currently producing and in development. It's called the goudreau lacalche deformation zone. Um, that continues on to 100% owned Manitou property to a point where it's cut off uh, along a major fault system and offset to the north. Um, and lucky for us, we've been fortunate enough to be able to acquire all those lands where it continues on eastward uh, after that fault offset for an additional 18 kilometers. Actually, Rich, I can bring up an image. You want me to bring up an image maybe for people who are watching this for the first time? Absolutely. Yeah, let me, let me, let me bring that up for everybody. And I'm, uh, here we go. 
Hold on. Here's the wonder. Here's the wonder of uh, of technology. Here, I'll bring it up in one second. There we go. You can see that, Richard. I can see it absolutely. All right. So tell us what we're looking at here. Um, there's the Baltimore deformation zone. Tell me. Tell us what we're kind of looking at here, and I'll move yeah. my mouse with you. So first off, every all the property uh, outlined in yellow. Uh, is 100% uh, owned by Manitou. Um, and we've subsequent to this map being published, we filled in that sort of central area above the Baltimore deformation zone. That's all 100% owned uh, Manitou. All this has been filled in now. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I got this from the website. So yeah, I don't need to be upgraded yeah. there. Yeah. So uh, everything in yellow is our 350 square kilometer land package. Uh, you see on the sort of the western half that Goudreau Lacalche deformation corridor. It hosts uh, past producing mines, including the Klein and Edwards, um, right here. Which, which are owned uh, by, by Alamos Gold now. Um, you see the Island Gold Mine just a little bit to the west. Uh, and then to the west again, the Magina Open Pit Development. So that goudreau lacalche deformation corridor has seen over a million meters of exploration drilling. Um, and those have been well-spent meters. They, they've resulted in the discovery and definition of uh, 10 million ounces of gold resource and reserves. And that's a corridor uh, right there that I'm moving my mouse over, right? That's the right. corridor. Yeah, that's unbelievable. And that's, it, that's it, unbelievable success. That, that visual alone is worth uh, a thousand words. 10, 10 million meters got 10 million ounces um, of resources and reserves. Uh, you know, very uh, high success rate. Um, that Goudre Lacalche is terminated along a fault that trends north, kind of northeast. Your mouse is on it now if you just follow it up, yeah. uh, you know, upwards and left, upwards and left there, George. Right there. Um, yeah. yeah. So, and then it it basically offsets that Goudre Lacalche into the continuation of the Baltimore deformation zone. And it's in the western part of that Baltimore deformation zone, um, the western 10 kilometers that we focused uh, for the past year, we did uh, about $3 million worth of uh, geophysical surveying, uh, soil geochem uh, sur surveying, uh, detailed geology where it's possible, where there's not sand and gravel, till covering the bedrock, uh, and a lot of prospecting. And it resulted in uh, basically the definition of a really, really uh, unique uh, target area. So now we're focused down, you know, with from 350 square kilometers, we're now looking at an area about five kilometers east-west by a two kilometer corridor north-south, so 10 square kilometers. It's a, it's a uh, Yeah, it's great to have a big land package, but sooner or later, you got to really narrow it down to targets, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and what is it we like about this particular target area? Well, we've got three massive granite intrusions that kind of bl block out a particular part of this uh, Baltimore deformation corridor. Uh, the geologist uh, term for this is a, a triple point junction. So you're in between three of these big bodies. Uh, that makes a lot of um, uh, space for dilation and form uh, the ground opening up space for quartz veins to be in place. Um, and within that triple point junction, we found a previously totally unknown uh, corridor of sort of east northeast trending faults. A uh, very similar trend and, and orientations of the big structures that are associated with the uh, the ore zones at the Island Gold Mine. Um, now we know this. Uh, we do have um, a joint exploration committee with with Alamo, so we we share you know a lot of the technical ideas on controls on gold mineralization and stuff. So they've they've I mean, come and just along. a reminder, but this is Alamos right here in uh, in this color and. Look, look where Alamos is relative to relative to you. So having yeah. them on board, having them on the team must mean a lot. Well, absolutely. And and subsequent uh, to this map being published, George, what's in gray here uh, on the legend says Trillium Mining, but but Alamos has now purchased this. So this is 100% Alamos. Right up, our, the only owners so this, in this, this part gray, of the belt. This gray here? Yeah, the only owner now wow. it goes from Manitou directly to, to Alamos. And then Magino uh, further on the west end, um, but it's it's the, you know the, the the same sort of key structures 
that they're measuring and observing at the island gold mine associated with the, the gold ore zones uh, occur in a big fault corridor be between these granite intrusions in this triple point junction. So this is the area that we moved the drill into. You mentioned the bridge. I mean, it took us almost a full year of uh, permitting process. Uh, where's the drilling? Uh, just to help me place my mouse. Where's the drilling taking place right now? If you just move it to the south by a, you know a few millimeters, yeah, within in the middle of that Baltimore deformation zone, in the hatch, yeah, just above where you are. Okay, so right around yeah, here, right in there. Yes, yeah. So that this is it. Um, we're we've we started drilling there, uh, drilling operations, including con construction of a bridge. Uh, all the trails, like this is this is terra incognita. It's where we're drilling is is covered by sand and gravel, uh, so there's no oak crop uh, or, or very very little. You may see a little bit in the side of a lake or something, but uh, generally it has not been prospected. The only targeting work is the, the geochemistry and the geophysics we've done, um, and I mapped out these key sort of structural setting. And you know now the truth machine's on the ground. We like I said we put in that bridge. Um, nobody put that bridge in before. Nobody put a diamond drill in there before. So this is an area that's never been drilled. There's no crop that hasn't been prospected. Uh, the only targeting work of, of you know, any mo modern sort of nature is the work that we've done in the last year. Um, so yeah, we're, we're in the midst of it now. Um, what, anticip what does the timeline look like, Richard? So January 11th is when you put that press release. I know that uh, it was about you. You announced that you're starting in a week or so. So, how far have you? What kind of progress have you guys made? And what are the milestones that investors should be looking for throughout? You know, the first half of this year, or or, or for however long the drilling is going to be taking place. All right. Well, first of all, I, I'm going to uh, expect to be in a position to provide an update, uh, specifically on that winter drilling uh, program uh, in the very very near future. Okay. And. So we'll be able to discuss exactly the specifics of where we are and what that outlook uh, is like. But I can tell you, we've 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 got a number of holes completed. Um, a lot of these holes have already been assayed, or sorry, not assayed, have been uh, logged uh, uh, and split and sent to the assay lab. And uh, once we have those starting to be returned to us, you know, we'll be re reporting results on an ongoing basis. I would expect in the in the coming few weeks. But again. Uh, we're going to provide a pretty holistic update on, on where that is exactly in the very, very near future. And yeah, and you, you have good reason for the target you selected uh, because you ran a multi-million dollar geotechnical program uh, that you completed in 2021, right? And, uh, and you guys obviously had some great results come back from that. So the first, the first thing we confirmed, you know, when it comes to uh, orogenic gold deposits is, you know, structure, structure, structure. Uh, and we confirmed that, I mean, we're in absolute elephant territory. Um, our uh, our colleague, technical colleagues, uh, both of our strategic owners at Alamos, as well as O3, um, they're in agreement that, you know, this, this is a very unique setting. You know, these things, they don't exist out there um, in, in very many cases outside of known mining camps. Um, so I think as we continue to drill here, We've basically uh, done a lot of de-risking. Uh, you know, I don't want to create bad karma and say you know ridiculous things like it's easy or anything. It's not. It's never easy. But we've done everything we possibly can to take the risk out of these targets and put the drill in the best possible place to to start start things off with this program. So again, it's it's in an area that has never ever been drilled, never been prospected by virtue of the fact it's covered, and there's multiple millions of dollars put into the targeting work. Uh, that's now complete, interpreted, and uh, the truth machine is on the targets. So assay results will start coming back in a few weeks. How long until you think this phase of the drilling program is done just for this phase? Then you kind of reassemble, see what you got, and then hit more targets. But this phase, are you guys almost done, or is it still going to be ongoing? Oh, it's going to be ongoing. Um, uh, this part of the world, we have a, a winter period. You know, It ends when the snow starts to melt, the ice melts, the ground gets real wet. So uh, we call that spring breakup. We're going to be drilling every meteor we possibly can until spring breakup starts. And then once the breakup period, uh, the ground dries up and we can get back in, we're going to recommence because we're not going to be done the first round. Um, and we, we had basically outlined about 10,000 meters of drilling. Uh, we will achieve a large proportion of that, 
but we're still going to have a lot of targets left that uh, we're going to have to continue on in the spring. And, and, you know, success also comes with a little bit of uh, luck and fortune. And uh, the luck that's happening right now is the macro environment for gold. Just last night on the futures, we went over $2,000 on gold. So timing's kind of right for, for Manitou as well, right, Richard? Yeah, overnight trading, uh, yeah, gold uh, around 5.30, 6 a.m. today, it, uh, it surpassed 2,000. It had a bit of a pullback, but you know, I think it's just a matter of hours or days here. Uh, it's going to be north of 2,000. I think, you know, the broader investing audience may finally start to turn to gold as a safe haven. People have been talking about it, but we, we haven't really seen that uh, large sort of uh, fire hose of, of uh, safe haven seeking volume. Well, it seems yet, like a lot come. of volume was driven into alternative, new disruptive things, uh, you know, crypto, NFTs, uh, cannabis, things like that. And people kind of went away from gold and precious metals for a little while, right? But it seems, like, it seems like people are coming back. And See, yeah, uh, I think a lot of these uh, alternate um, uh, investment avenues, uh, you, you're seeing when the markets get uh, vol volatile and shaken up, these things aren't doing particularly well either. They're kind of going lockstep with the broader markets. Whereas, you know, intuitively gold should be counter cyclical in, in extreme volatility. Yep. And it's been holding nice and firm in that 18, 1850 range. And as soon as, uh, you know, this, uh, trouble starts settling in, it started making its nice little climb here. And what I like about it, Richard, it's a nice and steady climb. It's not a big knee jerk reaction. Uh, I, I think people look to gold to be stable uh, and and appreciating, they just don't want to see these massive spikes up and down. Yeah, and you have to remember, I mean, the thing about gold supply is fairly inelastic. It's not as if you can uh, instantly turn on a lot more gold supply. In fact, you know, you're going to see a significant amount of gold uh, come offline. You know, Kinross has announced they're shutting down uh, the coal yep. mine that takes ounces of gold out of the market. So, um, if anything, this is more disruptive to even the gold supply than than anything else. Uh, if everything goes well, Richard, and by the way, that doesn't mean perfect because I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the biggest tech company in the world, the biggest gold mining company in the world, or the Manitou Golds of the world. Uh, we all run into our hiccups. Uh, but if everything goes reasonably well, how long until you guys think you have a pretty good idea of what you have? Uh, well, I think, you know, we're in this first pass uh, program, 10,000 meters. You know, if we have any sort of success in any of these, you know, we got two dozen holes uh, laid out in front of us that we're there, we're sort of uh, drilling them one by one. If any sort of success, you know, we're going to follow up right away. You know, we're going to bring in additional drills. Um, you know, we're not afraid to, uh, you know, continue on with the exploration, but also, you know, dedicate one or more drill rigs to a follow up on, a, on his own. So, you know, I would think within several months of actually initial discovery, you know, we would start uh, with step out and, and undercut drilling uh, in a sense that we would not necessarily have a resource or anything by within a few months, but we would start to indicate uh, whether there's size potential and, uh, and you know, potential at depth on anything. All the, all the drilling we're doing, our maximum hole depths are about 300 meters. So uh, that at a 45 degree dip, that only gives you 200 meter uh, intersection. So there's a lot of room, you know, in a few months we could drill uh, a lot deeper than that and significantly uh, stretch things out along strike uh, if successful. So that would be my anticipation, you know, sort of three, four months after a discovery hole, the market's going to know whether this is a, you know, uh, exciting a new zone that's got legs and it looks, looks like it could be an ore body one day. Well, last question, because it's okay. kid. I wish I could, we could talk about more about that, but we just, got, we just got to wait for the results to come in. But last question, which is, you know, given the fact that you had such a, you know, a good program in 2021, you've got targets, you've got a high degree of confidence. Even the partners believe you're in, I'm going to quote, elephant territory, because I really wrote that during the, down earlier. And you've made the sale of Dryden properties, which only makes your balance sheet even stronger. How, how, how confident do you feel? How optimistic do you feel about Manitou's position now on all fronts from the property to the balance sheet? Well, I think, you know, we started on this uh, adventure in the Goudreau project uh, six years ago now. 
when we started putting together. And we've come so far, uh, you know, narrowed the focus down. I'm highly confident that, you know, the area we're in now, you know, there's no guarantee we're going to bag an elephant, but we know we're hunting elephant where they, in the territory they live. So um, it's up to the drilling. Uh, we've done all we can. We've totally validated the, the thesis that, you know, there is going to be elephant territory somewhere on this property. We've identified it now and it's up to, uh, up to the drill to, you know, make that first intersection. You can't wait, can't wait for that. But uh, in the meantime, Richard, right now, as of today, with the sale of the Dryden properties and all things going on, you position the company really, really well for success. And now, like you're saying, and now it's up, now it's up to the drill. But can't wait for those, can't wait for those results come to come back. Can't wait to have you back on to hopefully uh, talk about some real great success. Any last words uh, to you for the, for the shareholders? Uh, no, I mean we've we've. Uh delivered a deal here that I think uh, allows for our investors to, to participate in the upside of the Dryden uh, properties through our equity and royalties uh, in, in Dryden Gold Inc. and their, their new properties that they're purchasing. Uh, well, you know, we increase the laser focus on the Goudreau projects uh, and really, you know, what we're doing now and for the next several months is following up on uh, years and millions of dollars of, of time and cash invested in this targeting. So, so this is it. I mean, the next, uh, well, it could be weeks. It could be the next few months um, that, you know, tell the story and, and whether we have success and what it is that we've, we've outlined here. Well, hopefully we're going to have another one of those. I love the saying uh, another six year overnight success story. Right. It's amazing. Yeah, that, yeah absolutely. It, it, well, it I mean, it, everybody says it takes luck to make the discovery, but, it takes a lot of, uh, you know, dedication and, and good targeting work, um, and we've we've laid the, a really really strong foundation. So I think we've gone a long way to creating uh, a bit of luck here for ourselves. No, you make you make your luck. I'm a big believer in that. So good luck to you. Good luck to all the shareholders, Richard. I know you got a big uh, a, a big drive ahead of you because you're going to be going up to the Goudreau yourself to take a look around. Thanks for being here today, and can't wait to have you back, my friend. Thank you, George. It's been a pleasure. To everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform. To Richard Murphy, he's CEO of Manitou Gold, trades in Canada under MTU for Friends in the S, under MNTUF. For those new to the story, because you saw the big headline today, plus you see that gold is busting out. You see that the company's got great targets and they got great, pop, great, uh, great companies on their board and investors. Now's the time for you to do your due diligence. Two ways to do that. First, get to the company's profile page on Agoracom. We've got the whole story neatly summarized there for you to give you a good 1,000-foot overview of the company. And then once you're comfortable with that, click right over the Manitou website, do your deep dive due diligence. If you believe in the future of gold, if you believe in great jurisdictions like Ontario, and if you believe in having great partners like Alamos and O3 Mining uh, on the side of a small cap uh, resources company, then hopefully discovered your next great company. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time. Hey guys, the video's over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our YouTube channel so you never miss another great Agoracom small cap video.